The love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Good morning and welcome to the United Church of Santa Fe on Palm Sunday, or as we are renaming it in northern New Mexico, Pinon Sunday. Because of the pandemic, there are no stores in town that have been selling palms for anybody. So here in northern New Mexico, we're changing it to Pinon Sunday. We're very glad you've joined us here at United Church of Santa Fe for this service that begins the sacred journey of Holy Week. And we also invite you to take that journey with us in the days ahead. Stay tuned on, via our website or Facebook page or simply watching your emails for the services for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and also the joyous Easter celebration. Also this year, we will be offering at noontime a brief meditation of 10 to 12 minutes, reflections for, this, for the days of this very holy week. And so we invite you to take this very sacred journey with all of us here at the United Church of Santa Fe, that we are united even when we're apart, and that by the virtue of God's grace and God's presence, we come together. We're very glad you're here for worship. This service ends with the sharing of communion as the week ended with the sharing of the Last Supper. And so if you haven't had a chance to do so already, take a moment and go get something that might resemble bread, crackers or breadsticks or other kinds of things, and then put something in a cup, in a chalice, if you will. It could be water, it could be wine, it could be juice, but something so that when we share communion, you and your family can share as well. And now, my friends, I invite us to begin worship as we do every Sunday, which is by taking into our lives God's gifts, by breathing in those gifts. But the other ritual we also do every Sunday is before we breathe in God's gifts is to take out our cell phones and make sure they're turned off completely. So wherever you are, in your living room, outside, sitting on your, on your back porch, or wherever you might be, if you have a cell phone with you, take it out and turn it off completely. So for the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you might be in God's presence as together we breathe in God's gifts and begin this journey. So let us breathe in even more deeply God's gift of peace that passes all understanding. Let us breathe in God's gift of hope for us and for this whole world. And let us breathe in God's deep abiding love for us and for all creation. Let us gather to worship God and continue this most sacred and holy journey.
the story of this day. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is the, is the one, one who comes in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Lord. highest. Let us enter this holy week and gather in this house of prayer. May God, God turn our hearts again to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May God help us follow in Christ's way, even if the path leads to pain before joy and the cross before glory. The, way the ways of Christ's, of Christ's redeeming love can transform, transform our lives and our world now, now and, and forevermore. forevermore. People of God, come, begin this holy journey and follow this path to life. The parade's end. So the crowd that had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead <coughs> continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went out to meet him. The religious leaders then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Word of God, word of life. Let us be together in prayer. Eternal God, whose whisper silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us now through the passion and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive the grace to show forth Christ's love in lives committed to your service. Amen. Amen. My
My friends, today we begin a pilgrimage in time. Within the Christian tradition, as within many other faith traditions, there are a number of ways and places to go on pilgrimage. Canterbury, Jerusalem, Santiago de Compostelo, all kinds of places. But this day, and in this particular year, we take a pilgrimage in place. We begin a sacred and holy and difficult journey. And so I invite us as we begin that journey and as we consider the scriptures that we've just shared and what lies ahead, let us take a moment and breathe in God's gifts once again to have the courage and the hope to take the next step. Let us breathe in deeply the gift of God's peace that passes all understanding. Let us breathe in deeply the gift of God's hope offered to us and to this whole world. And let us breathe in deeply God's deep abiding love from which nothing in life nor death, height nor depth, nothing in all creation can separate any one of us. Let us pray. You who are closer, O Lord, even than the next breath we take, it is you who calls us on this journey this pilgrimage in time. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we breathe in your gifts of peace and hope and love, that those gifts might strengthen our courage and our determination to follow you throughout this holy week. For we do know that though the journey will lead us into places we would choose not to go, ultimately it will lead us to your new life, for it is a journey you take with us every step of the way. Hear are our prayers this day, O Lord, as we take the next step. Amen. It was only four weeks ago, four weeks ago that we were so filled with anticipation and plans for the new life that spring would offer. Schools were planning sports tournaments and concerts and graduation. Businesses were planning the tourist season here in Santa Fe. And here at the United Church of Santa Fe, four weeks ago, all you had to do was to read the March newsletter and it was filled with anticipation. All kinds of programs and projects for this spring and especially for this season of Lent as it leads to new life. By the beginning of March, just four weeks ago, we had already begun, we'd already started not one, not two, but three book studies for Lent this year. The Holy Week Festival Choir had begun the rehearsals and all the music had been ordered. We had commissioned our young people to go on the trip to the border, to the Arizona-Sonora border that second week of, of March. We had all kinds of plans and boy were we ever getting ready for Easter when this whole sanctuary would be filled with people, with music, with hallelujah choruses, with Easter lilies. All of that was planned. And in fact, the palms for this Palm Sunday service and the Easter lilies had all been ordered as well. We were ready to go and filled with anticipation. And in fact, we were not only planning for Easter, we were also planning for the end of May when we would be celebrating the 40th anniversary of the United Church of Santa Fe. All kinds of plans were in the works. And every one of us, every one of us, not only in this church, but throughout this whole country, I would imagine even throughout this whole world, people were filled with anticipation and hope and all kinds of joy about what this spring would bring. All of that four weeks ago. 
before we entered into this time of cancellations and postponements. Cancellation of the final four. <laughs> Cancellation of the start of the spring baseball season, spring training. Cancellation of youth concerts and high school swimming meets and track meets and cross country and all kinds of things for our young people. Postponement until a later date for concerts and recitals and family reunions. Postponement of all the plans to next Lent that we had already made here at the United Church of Santa Fe. We were so filled with anticipation and hope and joy for the coming of Easter and the coming of spring until everything started being canceled and postponed to a later date. All that was just four weeks ago. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It was just four days. Four days after that wonderful Palm Sunday, Pinion Sunday parade through the great gates of Jerusalem, where people lined the street and shouted and shouted Hosanna in the highest and waved their palms as the one named Jesus rode through the streets into that big city on the back of a donkey. They all shouted Hosanna, which is a word that simply means save us. And they waved according to the Gospel of John palms because palms are a sign of new life in that desert land, just as pinions are a sign of long life in this high desert land. They were all filled with expectation and joy and hope, and the crowd just shouted louder and louder until the religious leaders themselves said, turned to one another and said, look, we can do nothing. The whole world has gone after him. And it was four days later, four days later, when the crowd's dreams had all turned to dust and they'd begun to turn against him. When all the disciples who'd been on the front row as he rode through the streets, or as he rode into Jerusalem, they too had seemed their hopes and their expectations die. Four days later, when they would all go their separate ways and leave him alone. It was only four days later after all of that expectation and joy and shouts of praise that he gathered with those disciples for what they and he knew would be the Last Supper. And then afterward, he took three of them and went out to the garden and they fell asleep while he prayed in anguish. Only four days later, when he would be arrested, four days after that crowd, when he would stand alone before Pilate on trial for his life and then be led out to a hill called Golgotha and Calvary just four days later. And as he stood there before Pontius Pilate, the corrupt Roman governor, he could hear from down below in the courtyard the sound of a rooster crowing because his very last disciple had denied him. I do not know this man. All that expectation, all that joy, all that hope, just four days later, when the crowds shout, turn from Hosanna to crucify him, just four days later. My friends, this is where this journey leads. 
from Palm Sunday and the heights of all that joy and expectation. It leads to the great gate, pilgrim gate of Jerusalem. But anybody who's ever been to Jerusalem knows that within a very short time, you are lost in the rabbit warren of back streets and dark alleys, just like he was, just like they were. It is a hard journey. It is a hard journey we take every single year. And I don't know a single year when it's been harder than now. Because that ancient story from 2,000 years ago of a day that was so filled with hope and anticipation and joy and expectation for what new life he would bring, four days later became a journey that led to loss and to fear and to death. Just like my brothers and sisters, our journey of the last four weeks has led from such heights and possibility into this rabbit warren of confusion and fear and loss and uncertainty that we now face. Then, like now, it's a journey we take whether we want to or not. Then, like now, it is a journey that brings us face to face with the challenges of our lives and the fact that we cannot control the future. Then, like now, we don't know what that future will look like when we get to the other side of this, whenever that happens. Then, like now, that fear can be compounded by the political and religious leaders of our day, just as it was for the political leaders of their day. But my brothers and sisters, as hard as that journey is to take, this year in particular, I urge you to take it. This year, more than any other time, we can't simply go from the Palm Sunday crowd to the Easter crowd without taking the journey in between. Because it is that journey into the back streets and dark alleys of Jerusalem, that journey in which we follow the one who, yes, rode through the crowd that day on the back of a donkey to shouts of Hosanna and waving of tree branches. It is that journey that will lead us to life. Because we follow the one who didn't just stay with the crowd. We follow the one who went to that Last Supper And with those 12 disciples, even Judas, even Peter around him, took bread, broke it, and gave it to them, all of them, all of them, and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. We follow that same one out to that dark garden where he cried out, let this cup pass, and prayed all of his fears all of his terror. We follow that same one as he stood alone, not only before the political governor Pontius Pilate, but before the religious leaders as well, people like Herod and others. We follow that one as he climbed that mournful step to Calvary. And we hear him cry from the cross, why have you forsaken me? My brothers and sisters, his journey is ours, not just in a book called the Bible, but in our lives this time. And we take this journey with a sure and certain knowledge that we follow in the footsteps of the one who has gone before us. And in ways I cannot fully explain, much less understand. 
we take that journey knowing that he walks with us every single step of the way. And so that when we get lost and cannot find our ways, when we cry out with fear in the night and feel forsaken, when we cannot find our way ahead or even take the next step, we know, my brothers and sisters, that there is one who walks with us, giving us courage, giving us hope, giving us the strength to take this sacred journey. Look, the religious leader said, look, the whole world has gone after him. And it was true in its own odd way. I can't say what the whole world is doing now. Not in this time, not as we begin this journey. But what I do know to the depths of my soul, and I invite you, urge you, encourage you to do also, is to follow after him. Follow after him every step of the way. Because this journey, my friends, this hard, hard journey of our lives in this time and in this world is a journey we do not take alone. And because of that, it is a journey that leads to life. Here and now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Ride on, King Jesus, no man can hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on, no man can hinder me. For he is King of kings, he is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. For he is King of kings, he is Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last, no man works like him. Four days later, after the cheering had stopped, he gathered with the twelve in an upper room and shared the meal we remember this day. When it was evening and time for the Passover meal, Jesus came with the twelve, and while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and blessed it, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings bread, bread from the earth. He broke the bread, and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. And then he took a cup, gave thanks, saying, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei Blessed art thou, O Lord, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins and the newness of life. At this journey and in the journey to the cross that followed, Jesus showed us the true extent of God's love for us and all creation. My brothers and sisters, let us share this meal so that we might share that love. We join in this meal to receive the bread of hope for our journey and the cup of the new covenant. Let us share this meal not because we must, but because we may. Let us share not because we are whole, but because in our incompleteness we stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Let us share not to make a statement 
or express an opinion, but, but to, to seek, seek a presence, presence and to pray, pray for a spirit. Let us share then, my sisters and brothers, as we are. It is spread for you and me that we might again know that in Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior, God has come to us, shared our common lot, conquered sin and death, and reconciled all creation to our Creator. Let us pray. God of this table and all tables, God of this time and all times, we give you thanks for this meal that reminds us of your presence in this time and all time. We thank you, O Lord, for being with us, even in the brokenness of our world, as you are known to us in the brokenness of this bread. We thank you for being known to us in the pouring out of the cup in the same way that you pour out your love for each of us, all of us, and this whole world. And so now we pray that your powerful spirit already present might be poured anew upon the gifts that we share from this table and the gifts that we share and hold in our hands throughout the, this whole congregation, wherever they may be. Pour out that powerful spirit that unites us even when we are apart. Pour out that powerful spirit that creates wholeness out of the brokenness of this world and of our lives. Pour out that powerful spirit as you poured out the wine into that chalice that sacred night long ago. Pour out that powerful spirit and give us the courage and the hope we need to take the journey that lies before us. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And blessed are we who are called to this table, who are hungry enough to share bread and cup wherever we may be. I invite you now, wherever you are, to take time to share that bread and to share that cup, to drink deeply from the cup, and to take deeply from the broken bread and to know your wholeness, your life, and God's love come to you in these gifts.
Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving. Through these gifts of bread and cup, O God, you have offered us communion with you. Through the journey of this week, you shared our sorrows and fears, even our death. And through the coming of Easter dawn, you overcame fear and death with your love and life. For all these gifts, we thank you. We also dare to ask for yet more. Give us the courage and strength to follow in the path of your passion and peace. Give us the faith to trust that it leads to your new life. Amen. Let us join together in our final hymn, Journey to Gethsemane, found in your bulletin. And now, my brothers and sisters, I bid you to go out into this world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that spirit be with us all. Go in peace. Amen.